Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. The questions presented today are elegant ones. For they show the depth of spiritual thought. They push the envelope of reality of the old souls who sit in the room. There's almost a hundred of you. And if you haven't figured it out yet, you have something in common. There'll come a day when the first thing you'll see in the eyes of another human being is their creator. And you will recognize instantly that it's you. And they will see the creator in you and realize it's them. And that is what you have in common, that at the cellular atomic level, it vibrates with the love of God. I am Cryon, but who am I? And the question is a good one. Why should you listen to me? And the question is a good one. And the intellectuals will go through a scheme of a hierarchy of attributes to try to figure it out. Even the intellectual spiritualists, with all the integrity they can muster, will try to figure it out. And that is not how it's figured out. How do you feel right now, listening to the voice? Do you hear it as authority? Or do you hear it as family? You do understand, do you not? I have not been a human. You do understand, do you not? And my job is to love you. And isn't that hard? Because I know you. You are a piece of the whole. The whole of creation. That which you call God, which is far more. What is the force of what you would call physics and nature that has put together a galaxy like this, spinning in a universe like this? And what would you call that force? Who was it who created the laws of physics itself? Who against all odds created them in a way that they would be beneficial to life? And what would you call that? And when you discover that whatever that is that you have no name for is inside you, what do you call that? It's more than benevolent. It's far more than that. It is the essence and the core of family. It is a system beyond your recognition, past the emotions that we give you as love. If you drop into your core, what do you feel? And how do you describe it? My partner has given many channels where he's tried to say what it's like as he sits in the chair and some of the things that he has felt. Or sometimes he gets close to the wind of the other side and hears the music, longs to be there. and is held by a silver tether that keeps him from going, but puts him in the wind so that he can give a message like this. He's in the tunnel, he's in the portal, he has to get close. But what he sees and what he experiences is not just light. He hears the music of the universe. He hears the choir that sings in light it is part of the creative source which knows all and is all and is the essence of compassion. And he knows that God is biased in love and it's not random. He knows it's not a thing. It is all. 
He recognizes the core as home and the earth as just a place you visit. He knows the reality when he's there. The true reality of self. That earth is work and the home is home. I get to show him this. It makes him want to channel. It makes him want to give the messages and try to give you the beauty of it. And so I'll give you a message now in the light of this that he feels. Dear old soul, everything you have learned today or has been taught today or has been mentioned today it is the teaching of action is pushing you to do things helping to explain what you're doing and giving you attributes to expect but every single human being will see these things as a list of to do's and there is an assumption based upon the tradition the very tradition of a God in three dimensions that makes you believe that you've got to try these things and push this ball uphill. That the ball is in your court and you've got to hit it, move it, manipulate it, understand it. And then there's overall feeling that if you put it in the right place and you do the right thing, you'll get the action that you expect and here you go. And you'll be able to look at these things, these new multidimensional things that are being taught and you'll be able to, to see the Akash and perhaps heal yourself and maybe even beyond. Maybe. I want to change that perception. My partner is suspended between the worlds right now. He is filled with the choir that sings in light. He hears the song that calls him home. He recognizes it, held by the tether. And it sings in his ear something he wants to tell you. You have no idea the help that you have around you and the catalyst for everything you want is something that has a rule it will not help it will not touch it will not inform it won't even show you it's there unless you ask for it when you release the gate through intent that says, I will do these things, you give us permission to flood in through all of the processes we have for you, through what you call the guides, no matter how many you think you have, through synchronicity, no matter what you think that is, through angelic help, no matter what you think that is, doesn't matter what you think it is. We control it and we know what it is and when you release the gate it comes to you and it holds your hands and pulls you forward and you don't have to push the ball it pulls it if you let it and the biggest issue with humans old souls alike is the tradition that says they gotta hold on And go at a certain speed, perhaps. Or they want to go too fast and not have the patience, perhaps. They think they've got to figure it out, perhaps. Instead of just stopping and letting us drive the machine. And that's how we see it. It's a multi-dimensional quantum machine that is starting to revolve around old souls and their intuition and their permission and their intent. And if you see it like this, and I ask you to, 
perhaps you will not feel that it is so daunting, it's so, so difficult, and that you're going to have to do this and that and study it. What if you were just going to go into a, a state of meditation, drop into your core and say, God, show me what it is you want me to know and let me hold on. This is a system of benevolent help. If the universe has intelligent design and against all odds it works a certain way to create a certain thing, why not you? Can you see this? That that benevolence extends to the human being and the old soul and any of those in this new energy who want to start a process that's going to save their lives make them live longer, be healthier, stay around, to walk on the planet in light. And we'll do everything to enhance that intent. Drop the rules around what you think you've got to do or what you've been told you have to do. Drop the traditions that say unless you do this or that you're not going to please God or you better do it this, cor this correct way or it isn't going to work. You think we are in the dark? We know you. You belong to us. You're here for a little while. Even, even all of your lives together at the beginning and the ending of earth is a little while. You belong to us. I belong to you. We are together. What would you do for your children if they were away? They were calling on the telephone for help. They needed you to pray for them or, or they needed you to help them in, in a way to hold their hands and get them through something. Would you tell them a, a whole bunch of rules? Would you fax them a list? The answer is no, and you know it. You be there. You hang on that phone for hours and walk them through it if you had to. And you know that, Mom, Dad. Oh, no, we're no different. That's the love we have for family. You're going to start understanding that even corporally, you are really a part of God. And everything you're doing now is part of a bigger picture. You're going to leave this place and you're going to get in your automobiles and you're going to drive, you're going to do errands, you're going to eat. But I, want you, I don't want you to forget this. There is a grand system. And we are always with you. You can't turn it on and off anymore. And some of you are going to feel that. It's why you're not sleeping very well. Are you aware of that? You call it whatever you want to. You can call it an encrusted pineal if you choose. <laughs> We're going to get through that encrusted pineal. And we're going to bother you so you can't sleep. I want to shake you awake and say, I want you to know who you are. I want you to remember who you are. And if that's all we can do to get your attention, that's what we'll do. Until some of you surrender and raise your hand and say, I give up. Tell me what it is I should know. <laughs> and that's when we get to talk to you. And some of you won't get messages. You'll just get chills. And some of you, when you raise your hand, will just feel the core coming into your heart. And I want to tell you that is a message. And it flows in and it talks to every cell in the cellular language. And you won't understand any of it. And some of you get healings and not even know it. Some of you will have something start in your body and you won't even know it because you didn't get it in 3D. Because you didn't get what, what others said you're supposed to get. Because you didn't hear a voice or have a vision. And you don't need any of those things. 
Just allow it. Old souls are built for this. You are built for it. I want to ask you a question in closing. A question that's, that's not really ever answered much. When you were seated as a human race, and there were very few of you, the ones who were seated, I will call first souls. They were in the right place at the right time to receive that duality from the Pleiadian. And the ones who were seated and went through the Lemurian experience and the many changes that happened on the planet to arrive at a place where they might be listening today to this message then have become old souls. And you've had thousands of lifetimes in the hundred thousand or so years that it took to get to this place. So far, so good. Now, let me ask you a question that you haven't asked me. Dear Cryon, the ones who were here to receive the seeding, were they any different than any other? Is there some kind of a random pool of soul selection that would have put them there during that wonderful time. <laughs> I want to tell you, if you didn't already figure it out, if it is true, dear human being, that there is a system afoot, that the ones who were here first to receive the seeds that would become old souls had a special status in order to be first. A special maturity that would let them become old souls eventually because you didn't wander away from planet Earth, you kept coming back, you know that. That's the system. Who were you and where did you come from? And why is it that you receive the Pleiadian information so easily? <laughs> what if I told you that you're so ready for this and that some of you have come from the seven sisters to be human? ready to go, ready to seed the next planet from the last one. Like seedlings are taken from crops in order to grow new crops. Some of you will understand exactly what I'm saying and some of you have no idea. But I just gave you an answer, very special. You were ready for this, selected for this, you wanted this. There was no random selection of souls from around the galaxy to come and be part of the first group of humanity. No, they were the ones who had been old souls before and would be old souls again. Your lineage of being an old soul in this universe is vast. And here you are again. So make it a good one like you did the last time. And stop wallowing in the minutia of how to do it. Drop into the core and get on with it, old soul. And some of you know what I mean. It isn't that hard. Go for it. It's time to talk this way. Because in this new energy, some of you are having revelations of why you're here. There is no newcomer in this room. Do you understand what I'm saying? No newcomer here. I am Cryon. I serve old souls. That's what I do. That's not the first time on a planet that I have come in during the final stages in order to encourage you to be next to you as you run the marathon of old souldom. To try to give you glasses of water as you run. 
careful not to touch you unless you ask for it, but being ready to give you whatever you need, including carry you on my back if you need it. That's what we do. We are ready for this. It's time you understood it. The system is one of help and benevolence and love, and it is powerful. We're ready to go. How about you? It's a good message. Profound, accurate, and true. And so it is.